Kathleen Martinez is descending into a 2,000-year-old shaft. She believes it could lead her to the lost tomb of Queen Cleopatra. The recent enlightening discovery of Cleopatra's tomb at an Egyptian location is one of many intriguing mysteries and secrets in the field of archaeology. By providing fresh perspectives on the lives and times of one of the most powerful kings in recent history, this amazing discovery has altered the history of this ancient civilization. Cleopatra VII, Philopator, was the last active pharaoh of ancient Egypt. She belonged to the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty, which controlled Egypt following the death of Alexander the Great. One of the most illustrious ladies in history, Cleopatra was a bright and charming leader. In 69 BCE, Cleopatra was born in Alexandria, Egypt. She was the daughter of Cleopatra V, Tryphenia, and Ptolemy XII, Oletes. Being a weak and unpopular leader, Ptolemy XII was ultimately compelled to leave Egypt in 58 BCE. Arsinoe IV, Cleopatra's younger sister, was placed in control of Egypt. Cleopatra had both Greek and Egyptian cultural training. She spoke multiple languages well, including Latin, Greek, and Egyptian. She also had a strong background in astronomy, philosophy, and mathematics. With help from the Romans, Ptolemy XII visited Egypt once more in 55 BCE. He appointed Cleopatra as his co-regent and crowned her Queen of Egypt. When Ptolemy XII passed away in 51 BCE, Cleopatra took over as Egypt's only monarch. During Cleopatra's rule, the Mediterranean region saw intense political and military unrest. The Roman Republic was competing for control of Egypt as its influence was growing. Cleopatra joined forces with Julius Caesar, a strong general and statesman in ancient Rome. In 48 BCE, Caesar invaded Egypt and overthrew Ptolemy XIII, Cleopatra's rival and younger brother. Caesar and Cleopatra fell in love and had a son, Caesarion, together. After Caesar's assassination in 44 BCE, Cleopatra aligned herself with Mark Antony, another powerful Roman general. Antony and Cleopatra were defeated by Octavian, Caesar's adopted son, at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. Cleopatra and Antony fled to Egypt and they committed suicide in 30 BCE. Their deaths marked the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty and the beginning of Roman rule in Egypt. Cleopatra is a fascinating and complex figure. She was a brilliant and charismatic leader, but she was also ruthless and ambitious. She's often portrayed as a seductress, but she also was a skilled diplomat and a capable military leader. Cleopatra's legacy is still debated today, but there is no doubt that she was one of the most influential women in history. There is no definitive description of Cleopatra's physical appearance. However, ancient sources describe her as being beautiful, with dark hair and eyes. She was also said to be intelligent and charming. For generations, people have been fascinated with Cleopatra. She has several depictions in literature, film, and television. She's frequently used as a metaphor for all three of these things. A notable historical figure was Cleopatra. She participated significantly in the Roman Civil Wars and was the final reigning pharaoh of ancient Egypt. The Ptolemaic dynasty came to an end with her death, and Roman authority over Egypt officially began. Cleopatra was a fascinating and intriguing historical figure. Although she was a talented and compelling leader, she was also cunning and ambitious. Although she is sometimes characterized as a seductress, she was also an accomplished diplomat and military commander. Cleopatra's legacy is still debated today, but there is no doubt that she was one of the most influential women in history. But because of the work of a well-known Latina archaeologist, we could be drawing closer to discovering her grave. Dr. Kathleen Martinez has made it her life's effort to locate the tomb of Cleopatra, the legendary Egyptian queen. Dr. Martinez was raised in the Dominican Republic and had an early interest in archaeology. Foster Martinez, a professor and legal expert, was the owner of a sizable private library. She used to learn about Egypt in the final days of Cleopatra, a subject that would later become her main passion. Her father was an expert in law. The mother's side of the family is French and English. Martinez chose to pursue a career in law rather than Egypt as a child, despite having a significant interest in that country. My parents have always discouraged me from pursuing an archaeology profession, telling me that I would never be able to get a reputable position in the field and that I would not be able to make enough money doing so. They convinced me and they were successful. 
In a number of her interviews, she stated, she pursued a legal education at the National Pedro Enrique University, following in her father's footsteps. She also obtained a bachelor's degree in English from the American institution Brown. At the age of 19, she earned her degree and shortly after she began practicing law. In addition, she holds master's degrees in finance and archaeology. Because of her unwavering passion for the subject and dedication to her work, she has emerged as one of the most well-known archaeologists in the world. The 10 Years of Dominican Archaeology in Egypt exhibition debuted at the Cairo Museum on April 18, 2018. It displayed the advancement, successes, and more than 350 architectural elements Martinez had discovered from the Ptolemaic era. The artifacts provide a record of the daily administrative, ecclesiastical, royal, and social obligations that developed as the Ptolemaic era came to an end. The exhibition highlighted the region's first substantial contribution to the study of Egyptology. The most significant artifact is the so-called Huge Steel. It has an edict from Pharaoh Ptolemy V that indicates the temple was built between 221 and 203 BCE. According to Martin, this ad demonstrates the significance of the religious structure that was devoted to the goddess Isis. When the Dominican woman noticed a monument to Cleopatra at the Taposiris Magna Temple, which is located around 45 kilometers west of Alexandria, she initially began hunting for the tomb in 2004. Most historians agree that the temple was built during the reign of King Ptolemy II, who was Cleopatra's ancestor. Since then, the team headed by Dr. Martinez has been excavating the area in an effort to learn more about the location of Cleopatra's tomb. Through her work, Dr. Martinez is connected with several recognized experts in the field of archaeology. Due to the fact that the hunt for Cleopatra's tomb has been going on for a number of years now, she has gained a greater grasp of the site and its history by consulting with geologists, historians, and other archaeologists. Her goal was to uncover more information about the location's past. The Valley of the Keys and the Temple of Isis are two places in Egypt where Dr. Martinez has conducted excavation work. She additionally works at the Taposiris Magna Temple. Her most recent endeavor was at this temple, where her efforts led to the discovery of a number of important artifacts, including a sizable collection of coins from Cleopatra's reign. Dr. Martinez's research is significant not only because it may help identify the location of Cleopatra's tomb, but also because it sheds light on the history and culture of ancient Egypt. Under the temple in the once famous city of Taposiris Magna, which is now a ruin on the coast of Egypt, archaeologists discovered a massive and magnificent structure that has been dubbed a geometric miracle. In the city's rubble, this tunnel was found. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities published this information on social media. They said that the building was discovered 13 meters below the surface and that it was discovered by Kathleen Martinez of the University of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic during continuing excavations and study of the temple. Ms. Martinez, who has been working at Taposiris Magna since 2004 in search of the unknown tomb of Cleopatra, believes that the tunnel might be a viable clue. This information is based on Ms. Martinez's perception that the tunnel would be a promising source. Ms. Martinez spoke about her conviction that the clue may take her to the graves of Cleopatra, the Egyptian queen, and Mark Antony, the queen's lover, in an interview with National Geographic. Even if there's just a 1% possibility that this would happen, the archaeologists from the Dominican emphasized that it would still be the most significant find of the century. Even though the tombs of many famous historical rulers are still standing today, for instance, the Mausoleum of Augustus in Rome, who was Antony and Cleopatra's mortal enemy, and the contents of the tombs have frequently been looted and lost over the course of several centuries. The tomb of Philip I of Macedon, who was Alexander the Great's father, and discovered in Virginia in the late 70s, stands out as a significant exception to this rule. The discovery of the tomb in its entirety has made it possible for decades of research to be conducted and its contents, which has contributed to an expansion of our knowledge about members of the Macedonian royal family and their court. The same thing would be true in the event that Cleopatra's tomb was uncovered and determined to be complete. From its contents, Egyptologists, classicalists, and ancient historians and archaeologists might learn a tremendous quantity of new information. Ancient Greek and Roman literary sources account for the majority of what we know about Cleopatra and her reign. These writings, which were created many years after the Egyptian queen passed away, were mainly unfavorable to her. 
We don't have a lot of information on the Egyptians' perspective on Cleopatra, but what we do know, such as the honorific reliefs on the temple she built and the votives her people offered, gives us quite a different idea of who she was. To this day, the grave of any other Ptolemaic emperor has not been discovered. It has been stated that they were all located in the palace area of Alexandria, and it's assumed that they've all been submerged along with the rest of that section of the city. The architectural design and physical contents of the tomb alone would occupy scholars for decades while revealing a vast amount of information about the controversial royal worship and the blending of Macedonian and Egyptian cultures. However, if Cleopatra's bones were also discovered there, they may reveal a great deal more about her, including the cause of her demise, her distinct physical characteristics, and perhaps a solution to the challenging question of whether she was of African or European heritage. Do you think there's any chance we might locate and examine Cleopatra's remains? Tutankhamun's period is down to that of ordinary ancient Egyptians whose mummies have been discovered over the centuries. Poor leadership, management, and treatment of the ancient Egyptians have a long history. Although it has thankfully been a long time since Victorian dinner parties offer the entertainment of unwrapping mummies, individuals involved in heritage are increasingly raising questions about how our predecessors should be treated. At Cleopatra's tomb in Egypt, a group of researchers discovered a terrifying discovery in August 2019 that may alter the trajectory of human history. Two mummified cat's remains were discovered, and it is thought that they belong to Cleopatra herself and her cat friends. The finding of the cats provides a window into the life and times of the final Egyptian queen. The cats were discovered in a little room next to Cleopatra's sarcophagus, and it's thought that they were buried there as part of her funeral rites. The same techniques that Egyptians employed to create their human mummies were also used to mummify cats. This emphasizes the significance of cats in Egyptian culture and argues that they were regarded as representations of authority and power. The find also gives insight into Cleopatra's personal life. It's thought that the cats were her beloved pets and that she kept them close to her even in death. This humanizes Cleopatra and shows that she was not only a formidable queen but also a devoted pet owner. The fighting of the cats is astonishing, and it may alter how future generations perceive Cleopatra and her power. It serves as a reminder that Cleopatra was surrounded by the people she cared about and trusted even in death. The cats may have been her sole company in her last hours, and their presence at her grave emphasizes their close emotional connection. This fighting serves as a potent reminder of the value of devotion and friendship in both life and death. In literature and art, Cleopatra has often been represented as an exotic and stunning monarch. However, there is not much proof to back up the notion of Cleopatra as a seductive beauty. Recent studies actually contend that Cleopatra was never seen as lovely in her own era. The oldest Cleopatra depictions can be found on coins produced during her rule. These coins show her holding the emblems of her while donning a crown. Her facial features, however, are not extremely alluring. Her eyes are tiny, her lips are narrow, and her nose is long and slender. These physical characteristics do not match the ideal of beauty prevalent in her day, which included big lips, slender noses, and round faces. The contemporary writings of historians also suggest that Cleopatra was not considered beautiful. Plutarch, a Greek biographer of the first century AD, described her as not beautiful but clever. He also wrote that she was not of such remarkable beauty as to strike those that looked upon her. These descriptions indicate that Cleopatra was not considered attractive by her contemporaries. In addition, there is no evidence that Cleopatra ever used her beauty to her advantage. While she did have a number of lovers, including Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, there's no record of her using her looks to seduce them. In fact, it's likely that her intelligence and wit were far more important to her success than physical beauty. Finally, there is evidence that Cleopatra deliberately downplayed her physical appearance. She lived during a period when being extremely beautiful for a queen was frowned upon. Cleopatra could have chosen a dress in a way that diminished her attractiveness as a result. This may help to explain why she's often portrayed as unattractive in modern literature and art. There's still some proof that Cleopatra is once regarded as lovely. Her facial characteristics do not resemble the traditional definition of beauty of the period, and it appears from texts of the time that she was not seen to be lovely. She may have purposely minimized her physical features, as there's no proof that she ever exploited her beauty. Cleopatra was probably never thought of as gorgeous in her own day as a result. How events may have changed if a single event or artifact is different is one of history's most fascinating puzzles. 
This video will look at an artifact that, had it been found, may have altered the course of human history. The Rosetta Stone is the first item that could have altered the course of history. The inscriptions on this ancient Egyptian artifact, which was found in 1799, were written in three distinct languages, Greek, Demotic, and Hieroglyphic. The translation of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs made possible by this finding contributed to the unraveling of ancient Egypt's secrets. It's likely that we would know significantly less about ancient Egypt and its civilization if the Rosetta Stone had never been discovered. Another artifact that could have changed history is the Shroud of Turin. This is a linen cloth that bears the faint image of a man who appears to have been crucified. The authenticity of the shroud as the burial linen of Jesus Christ has been the focus of heated discussion and conjecture for many years. The direction of Christianity and global history may have been significantly changed if the Shroud of Turin had been positively recognized. The Dead Sea Scrolls are the last object that may have altered the course of history. These ancient scrolls, which include some of the first copies of the Hebrew Bible ever discovered, give us priceless information on the formation of early Judaism. We would have very little knowledge about the history of the Jewish faith if the scrolls had never been found. So now, our video comes to an end, but our comment box is waiting for your views on it. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.